ACMA is known for innovation, so it, it has about 10 patents which are already registered in its and put into commercial use. There are four R&D centers. We have energy management solution for telecom operations as we mentioned down here. And um, besides uh, telecom, we also into solar energy generation, which is basically uh, we have a thermal power plant, uh, thermal, uh, uh, solar thermal power plant, and uh, we are also getting into solar PV power plant. There are four businesses which ECMA is currently into. One is telecom, which is the forte. Second, we also venture into defense. Third, distributed energy, we are talking about solar energy. And fourth is wastewater treatment. Today, we are talking about more of telecom. So, here are the suit of uh, products we used in telecom. These are enclosures. We talk, we know about enclosures. Then, uh, power management uh, equipments, which are PIU, control unit. Um, SMPS with batteries, etc. Then cooling management. Uh, uh, in telecom, uh, you know one of the biggest uh, energy consumption is due to cooling. So we have innovative products for cooling, which is basically uh, air conditioner, heat exchangers. Uh, passive cooling is more of an innovative product from ACME, which is called PCM, uh, largely known as PCM, and NAC, uh, which is again a compressor-less uh, air conditioner. Besides uh, products which ACME offers, there, there is a suite of services which uh, ACME is into telecom, right? Uh, right from TSP, this is for infrastructure erection and um, installation. We have energy and site management. Basically, we actually manage energy for some of the telecom uh, uh, operators as well as uh, tower companies. And uh, equipment OEM, uh, ONM, basically, we are talking about ARCs or uh, uh, annual maintenance contract for. Uh, this equipments. Today we are talking about uh, the presentation is all about like, what is the business model which we are uh, talk uh, which we want to present as an innovative business model, right? So let's go to <coughs> where we are focusing. We are we always focus on energy. Okay, sorry. We always focus on energy, and we are talking about a lot of money here. India spends about 6,000 crores on energy for running this over 300,000 towers in India. All, power, all the telecom uh, tower put together, there are about 3 lakh towers and we consume about 6,000 crores. This actually means <coughs> the power which is consumed only by uh, the telecom uh, site, okay, which is divided into two. One is the state electricity board power and the second one is gensets which are in every tower correct now what happens this entire uh, energy distribution if you look at the snapshot of it you will see that 60 percent of energy is provided by the state electricity board but 40 percent of energy is basically produced on the site through the normal gensets over there and this particular is a potential of saving and we are talking about if we save over 15 percent entire energy we're talking about close to 1,000 crores of energy, 1,000 crore rupees of energy saving possibilities. So it's a huge potential. Okay. So what we did was basically we have put up this model to few sites here. We are talking about 600 sites, and we are talking about uh, uh, customers where we propose this business model to them, saying that we will save 15% energy for you. Give us the entire ONM opportunity for for us. Actually, in other words, this 1,000 crore is also how, how much is this power? You know, we just try to give an analogy. This power is equal to serve about 10 years. Okay, if we talk, talk about this power, this power is so huge that we can electrify and uh, we can electrify about 54,000 villages only for lighting for 10 years. This is the energy which we are talking about saving one year each year. So it's a huge energy which we are talking about saving. So let's get into what is there in the telecom uh, uh, telecom um, uh, site and how much energy is being saved from which uh, from which buckets. Now, if you look at it, the energy uh, the model was basically based on the total cost of ownership. That means we went to the customer and told the customer, fine, instead of you running the tower on your on your own and you uh, paying the bills without actually finding out where the energy is being lost, we will take care of the entire uh, assets. We'll we will actually set up an assets for you, we will run the assets for you, and we will give you a fixed energy model. 
That means you don't, whatever there is a risk of uh, extra energy being consumed or lost or theft or whatever, we will take the ownership of that. Okay, and that was the model which was created for them. But to bring it to exactly the numbers on it, I will walk you through this uh, slight uh, information on this. Actually, in an in a tower, there are two there are two tower, there are two equi equipments. One is the active part, which is basically used for transmitting, and second one is the passive part, which is air conditioning, your SMPS, uh, your um, uh, what do you call batteries. Now these are the, these are the other uh, part of passive equipments which basically consumes energy. Okay, which are not actually used for telecom. Uh, it's not used for trans transmission. Now this actually consumes about 50 percent of energy. That means if that was not required, if the SMPS was not required, if air batteries was not required, and if air condition is what was not required, we could run this country on th uh, by using only 3,000 crores of rupees on, on energy. But now we are running it only because of this. So if we can manage this red part, that is basically the passive equi equipment part, we can actually save a lot of energy here, right? And that's the reason why telecom by itself is going into a uh, outdoor model BTS, correct? So we went and we, we said, okay, fine. Uh, to, to basically increase the efficiency of this, we will have to increase two things. One is the product efficiency, and second thing, second thing is the operational efficiency. So that's what we proposed to the customer and said, okay, fine, there is a fixed energy. There is a fixed energy model. You pay us fixed price for whatever installation you have, whatever loads you have uh, installed on our site, and we will charge you a fixed uh, fees for the rest of the year. Now, <coughs> derivation of this energy, fixed energy, was also a, a problem. So what we did was, we said, if you look at this chart, this chart represents different three scenarios. That means when the electricity board, uh, when the state electricity board power is available, your cost of energy is about only about 650 per day, okay? But if if you look at the uh, state electricity board, availability goes on goes down. That means from 60 percent to 40 percent. That means your uh, the entire energy bill for that particular day goes up. Correct. Now this was a risk which the tower companies as well as the opcos were not ready to take. They are saying that this risk is something too too big a risk. Basically, uh, the people who are on the ground who are managing and maintaining the equipments are basically the responsible for managing this uh, mix. So we said, okay, fine, we will take the risk. We will manage it. And then we will give you a fixed model. That means it will be a flattened price for you, no matter what happens, whether the electricity board that day is available or not available, whether genset is running or not running. No, that, is, that is how we took the, the risk. That risk was transferred to us. And then we gave them a proposal, which was saying that, okay, fine, there is an initial investment which is required to change the uh, equipments from non uh, inefficient equipments to an efficient equipment. So, of course, as well as our company said, we are not going to invest it. So, we said, fine, we would invest it and charge you on charge you on the lease basis. That means for 10 years, the contract is there, and for the 10 years, we'll just keep you on a depreciated cost. Second thing, energy. Energy also was basically uh, provided as the baseline. We created a baseline for each uh, configuration of the site. For different sites, different availability of electricity, we configured the site and we said, okay, fine, for this particular uh, configuration, this is the fixed price for you for the year. Of course, depending upon the variation in the uh, diesel price and etc. Then last is operation. Again, because uh, the site is, all these passive equipments are to be managed by somebody, correct? Now, managing those equipment is not only seeing whether it is on or off, but it is actually to be operated onto a parameters which is designed by or which is uh, given by the OEMs. Now, if you don't operate this para this particular equipment within the parameters, your efficiency of that system basically goes down. So we said we will take the responsibility of running the equipment also for you. So the entire maintenance, the OEM, will be our responsibility. And that's how we said, okay, we'll be a fixed price for that. For example, uh, the client doesn't have to go to a generator manufacturer and say, okay, fine, give me an annual maintenance contract. When, he, when the genset fails or it is becomes inefficient, he points fingers to somebody saying that, ONM. So that's how it uh, varies. So we, we basically said this is the entire model where we will be basically giving you a uh, fixed, fee, uh, fixed fee for the equipment change, second is fixed rate for the load uh, this, uh, for the energy, and lastly fixed fee for maintenance. So what was the benefit to the customer? Top three, no capital outlay for 10 years. We are managing. So we will basically change the equipment whereas, uh, when we feel it is inefficient or it is unreliable. Fixed energy price. There's no there's no risk for the operator or the tower company. Then all.
all this nuisance of operati operation and maintenance was also transferred to us. So this was the benefits to the customer. What do we gain? Capital employed was assets which are basically um, by us, but we basically took, took on the ROI based on the energy saving which we will enjoy. Energy saving beyond the agreed price straight goes to our bottom line, so it helps us. It makes business sense for us. And lastly, actually since we are on the ground and we are allowed to change, make the changes on the uh, equipments, which are passive equipments, we become more innovative because that helps us to uh, uh, get, uh, save our, increase our bottom line there. So this is how uh, the model was made where basically both the, com both the companies or both the uh, participants in this contract had a win-win situation. So this, is, this was the model which was presented to them and we are running this model for last two years uh, with two uh, major companies in India and we have been making some money on it also. We have not Dubai taken. One is a, a both are. are uh, yeah, both. Yes. Okay, but as a, 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 this is a tendency, you know, the, like uh, people are moving towards uh, uh, like uh, typical economy defined in such that the GDPs or gas of the world. Correct. And they in turn will rent out these facilities to to the telcos. Very sure. In that scenario. Exactly. In the 